everybody, John Pomeroy here from Pomeroy Art Academy. I want to give you a sneak peek at our character design intensive that we've just started. Take a look. We cover some of the basic ideas of shapes and how to approach your simple character design. I'm always telling my students, go out and sketch. And, and sketching is, is just a great uh, a way to discover character design, concept art, visual development, um, and also action studies. You know, I'm always telling my animator students, you know, go out and look at uh, animals, you know, in action or in attitudes. But it also becomes a great springboard for some designs. I remember um, some of my uh, sketch pads that I did back in, oh, geez, Art Center College. Um, these are all of my anatomical studies, but I got into doing different faces, you know, and all kinds of, you know, positions of the feet and, and arms, and I was doing animal hooves and all sorts of other different, different types of uh, anatomical studies. But this became a real, um, foundation for me to understand design. Curves against straights, um, things that work together that were not twinning, but things that would complement each other. Um, here's another one of my sketchbooks that I had. I was doing a lot of uh, uh, copies of great illustrators and designers. Here's uh, one, Charles Dana Gibson, American illustrator. There's another one of his um, pen studies that he did. Uh, this is of Rembrandt. We were studying, you know, classic artists of the past, Raphael. We got into, there's another Raphael. We got in all kinds of classical studies, but I did a lot of little tiny studies of the most mundane objects, keyholes, uh, bottle caps, shelving, the ends of screwdrivers, brushes, light bulb fixtures, pencil sharpeners, perfume bottles, and on and on and on. I was doing, they, my design teacher had me doing all sorts of studies of the most mundane objects, but while this was happening, I was absorbing all kinds of great design concepts and ideas. This, this is like um, if you're an athlete, you're doing you know, your bench presses. You're getting your designer muscles in order so that you can recognize what works really well as a design concept for animation. And you may get, the, you may get an idea from uh, finger clippers. You may get an idea from a squeezed uh, bottle of toothpaste. You never know where an, a great idea is going to come from. And I, I'm thankful for the discipline and the encouragement that my teachers were giving me uh, in making sure that I would follow up. This became a daily regimen for me of putting pencil to paper and just doing sketches of objects around, you know, around the house. Uh, the eraser tip of a pencil, my own hand, uh, out looking outside our front door, a uh, toothbrush, uh, a, a drafting compass, uh, the top of a, of a bottle. So I encourage you to please pursue that uh, as a way to kind of flex your muscles. One of the things that really helps me in my design is to observe nature. Now, this was another principle that was passed on to me by my design teacher at Art Center. You know, if you can, if you were stranded on a deserted island that had vegetation and you looked at all of the plant life on that island, you could probably realize and understand every design principle that God ever made. And it's all out there. If you look at the bark on trees, if you look at the petals on flowers, if you look on bushes, on greenery, on everything that surrounds you with grass and leaves and, and trees and limbs, you can probably get every design principle there is. With that in mind, what I do is I spend a lot of time looking at patterns. 
I look at patterns in linoleum, in oak floor, in tree bark, uh, in household items, the most common everyday things that you can find around you. They can give you great ideas for characters. And um, one of the things, you know, I'll go and take a look at, like here's a floor pattern, for instance. I looked at this, I took a picture of it, and I said, I've got to put that in my notebook because there's something there that I can use that will give me an idea for maybe a tree creature, an alien, some sort of character. I mean, if you look at, here's two eyes, here's the top of a head, here's a mouth, and here's kind of a skull structure. And I'm just looking at that, and I'm thinking, okay, let me just riff off of that a little bit. What would I be able to get? And I'm just thinking, there's all kinds of terrific shapes around that just need to be discovered. I mean, there's all kinds of interesting things happening here. I can continue to work on this design, but there is something already there that's inspiring me that I can see, that maybe nobody else can see, that would be a great springboard for a design. Um, let's go to some others. I mean, I saw this um, shape. I couldn't figure out, okay, there's something there that might be interesting. Let me see. This becomes kind of an interesting challenge and exercise just to discipline ourselves to recognize shapes that are around us. I'm looking at this shape right here. And for a moment, I see a big nose I see a smile. I could see the placement of two eyes. I mean, this could just go into my book on character ideas just by looking at that. Let's try another one. Here's one. I looked at this, I looked at this right away and I thought, what could that be? I mean, I saw the makings of a little, I don't know, rodent character or something. I saw a nose and an eye and I saw a muzzle. You could see right there a muzzle, a large nose, an eye right there. Maybe the other eye is placed right there. I saw something like that. Now, this is just the beginning of a thought, but it gets me going. It got me excited. I could probably continue to riff on that. It looks like some sort of a weasel character based off of that. That little wiggly scrawl, I, I was able to look at it and say, oh, wait a minute, there might be a possibility for a character there. Um, here's another one. Look at this. I mean, this is... This is the bark of one of our trees out in our front yard. And a couple of the branches have been taken off. But here are like, is that three eyes or two with a mouth opening? It just got me thinking, oh, there, well, that's an interesting creature character. 
I just happened to be walking by and seeing this. I mean, this is the impression I got from it. This mouth. Maybe there's a nose there. I'm not sure. With three eyes. And it, it goes inward and then out again. I mean, that's something I could have used on when I was designing my pirate crew on Treasure Planet. <laughs> I mean, interesting, you, you can get the most interesting ideas for not just shapes, but also textures too. Anyway, I mean, that was, it's, it got me excited. Um, here's the most mundane thing I've ever seen. It's just the, um, the keyboard pad outside our garage. But I just started looking at this shape. And I started thinking cartoon right away. So there's that indentation of that label or whatever it is. <laughs> so, I mean, there's an interesting character. Now, this one was really interesting. Um, I barely saw this. This was all on a linoleum floor, but I saw a large brick-like shape or tapered shape. I saw eyes, I saw a nose, and I saw a mouth. right there. So there was another fun design in the making right there. Here's, the, here's one that just almost an alien-like shape. Strange little wobbly neck, this mouth orifice with these strange eyes. That could be the beginning of a really interesting design. Here's one that caught my eye. This was outside of our, outside of our uh, side porch by our step. I looked at that and I thought, well, it looks like a turtle's head. It could be, you know, even a dinosaur. I start, you know, you, st you look at these shapes, and for me, I immediately think of, huh, well, that could be a dinosaur. It looks like Littlefoot's mom. And it could be the springboard for something totally different, like you've never seen before, which is the ideal. Anyway, that is something I want you to challenge yourself with. Look around you, see if you find interesting designs in the most everyday items, in the flora and fauna that, you're, that surrounds you. Uh, it could be in a sidewalk, it could be in a cracked piece of concrete, it could be in a, uh, an old beat up tin can. Here is, um, I was, um, walking through our house and I saw this shape. It's my, my wife's handbag. <laughs>
And it was just sitting there. And I thought, oh my gosh, there's a design right there. And so I immediately put pencil to paper. And I came up with this shape. So that inspired this. There's the eyes, there's the part of a nose, there's a grumpy old mouth, big kind of tapering block face with a hairline up here. And so it went from that to that, and then I pushed it even further and then came up with this. <laughs> so, I mean, it was just uh, serendipitous, but it, it, seemed to, it seemed to work, you know. You look at an everyday object and you get an idea for a great design. Uh, here's another one. An everyday object. A vacuum cleaner. And it has this uh, large tubular plastic channel where all of the uh, dust and debris goes that gets vacuumed up. But I looked at that and thought, oh my gosh, I see an eye line, I see, I see a mouth, I see a chin. And so I did that design. That inspired that. And then I kept riffing off of that and came up with variations of something that was tapered inside, concaved, uh, went from that to that to that. So, I mean, you never know where you're going to get some great ideas for some designs. So observe, keep on the lookout because it really comes in handy.